Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. So, I wanted to do a follow-up on this guitar, my Ovation Breadwinner. It's the David Cassidy Partridge Family Glen Campbell Variety Hour Prototype. This thing was built in 1968, and it was a prototype for the Ovation Breadwinner. They didn't have a solid body electric guitar yet. All they had was acoustic electrics and just acoustics. I believe they went right into acoustic electrics uh, with the pickups and those things. Uh, but those are unique guitars. I want to get me one. I've always liked them. The uh, Ovation with the resin back. But this is sort of like that. It has like a resin coat on it. It has this wonderful uh, electronics guard right here. Look how nice this is. You just turn these and it pops off. Uh, no serial number. Or is there a serial Yeah, there's a serial number on the, um, uh, the plate. But this one was actually made in 68 and then sent back around 72, 73. Uh, and then resold probably in 74. Um, <clears throat> and the way you know these are prototypes is they have the jack right here instead of on the scratch plate or the pick guard, whatever you want to call it. Now, the last thing that happened when I did a, a, uh, a video about this is I played it, I think at the time I only had the deluxe, I didn't even have the 18 watt running. It was in the shop. And uh, what I've learned is that it has a really good, uh, like you can be really clean, almost like an acoustic guitar, and then just roll off. And what I've just did in here, since I've been he in here, because this is the first time I've had the guitar uh, really with this amp since I dialed it in, and I'll tell you what happened. So far, I have yet to crack inside the guitar, because if you watch any of the videos I made when I was going to get into it and like take the whole thing apart, this, the, the, neck comes down beautiful neck by the way this fingerboard comes down uh pretty far down it's 24 frets and it extends a little bit and that blocks the pick guard so you basically have to take the neck off and i didn't want to start doing all that <coughs> sorry so what i did is i just took uh, a couple of these screws off like i took these four screws off right here on the pick guard right by the the uh, tone knob which is the one that was making the most noise and I just took some deoxid, uh, you know, spray over there, and I had a long, you know, that has the long straw on the end, the tube, and I just got right up in there and just drenched it with that. And I wouldn't ordinarily drench it, and somebody's gonna go, don't ever drench it. But this thing was making so much noise, and I'd already tried to hit it once, and it, like every time you like, I had my headphones on, uh, running it through the zoom, and every time I turned the knob, it was like really making a lot of noise. <clears throat> so I just drenched that baby, and, Turned it a few times, forgot about it. Same thing with this switch, it was making noise. There's three positions on the switch. Neck, bridge, and then this kind of out of phase version of both pickups. And this is involved too in the out of phase. Hard to explain, you'll see what I mean. But you can kind of find cool sounds and you decide where you want to be. Well, once I got that deoxid in there, this thing really, really stopped uh, making noise. It's amazing. So now it's, I'm probably gonna make some noise now that I've said that. But compared to where it was, it was like almost unusable. Unusable. You had to kind of like leave it set because it was so, and it was wonky in the fact that as soon as you started turning it, you could tell it was killing the circuit. There was like a dead spot somewhere, you know. And so the uh, deoxid got rid of that amazing product. Um, the other thing is that I, at one point, tried to put, I was getting some buzzing down here because at some point, this bridge is very innovative. And I've seen a lot of guitars, guitar uh, manufacturers, including Gibson, have variations of this bridge after this bridge. I really think people copied the heck out of this thing, uh, and it's really cool. And at first I was like, I can't even figure out how to adjust it because it was kind of tight uh, from years of sitting. But I finally figured out it was just a flat screwdriver, you know, that goes right in these holes right here. There's like two holes. It's a two-pointed two bridge, two-mounted two-point mounted bridge. So you got one mount here, one mount here. And they're fairly big, you know, you can go back and watch the video, I've got detailed stuff on it, you know, showing it and everything. But you take a flathead and you just crank uh, down to lower it and back up, you know, backwards to pick it up, just like you would, you know, any bridge. And once I got that going, I started playing with heights, tried to get my action way up high, like I would an acoustic guitar, my, the way I run my strats, especially the Squire right here. I had to get that really high because the neck, and it's a long story with Squires, if you look into them, they're hard to get low uh, without having it fret out somewhere. Um, so anyway, I was used to playing high, tried to do that, but it started buzzing down here, and I tried to use Vaseline, that was gross. I 
didn't want to do that anymore. Uh, and so I lowered it down per, uh, to a more normal height, got rid of that problem, no more buzzing there. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the nylon saddles, and if you don't get these right, they sound muffled and dead. But if you get everything just right, they just suddenly come alive and get really uh, sparkly. Very, very nice acoustic tone, like really chimey. I love up here, it gets it's this beautiful natural re reverb, real resonant. I don't know if the mic will pick that up, but it's, it's really cool. You can make some just interesting things happen with this guitar. 24 frets, like I said. So once I got the bridge height correct, it really started playing nice, and I was really happy with it. But every time I tried to plug it into an amp, man, these, it, the whole thing was wee! You know, especially with the Marshall with the Deluxe, it was okay. Uh, so I think the best thing to do with this guitar, at least for me, the way I play, is to lower these pickups pretty far down. Uh, so I've got them basic. I've got the bridge basically flush with the body and the neck maybe up just a tad because it felt a little anemic uh, all the way down whereas the bridge if you pick it up it starts to squeal I may pick up the I'm looking at it now and it looks like the uh, treble side has just sunk a little much so I'm going to pull that side up just a little not much just a little because it looked like it was down you know lower than the pickup mount which looked kind of weird but now it looks right and the, just picture the, these humbuckers being pretty flat as opposed to being like right up to the strings like you would sometimes. Because remember, this is a, or you don't remember because this isn't your guitar, but this is an active EQ guitar. So in other words, you have a boost circuit in here. You've got basically like a pedal situation going on inside. So it just reacts differently. And the pickups are super funky. I don't know what the technology is, but you've got like these like sensor things here and then you got the magnets and I don't know what's going on it's really fascinating uh, I think the sound is about a B on the pickups if I had to really you know say what I think they're not A plus like some of the pickups I've heard uh, that could have been better but it's a really interesting concept uh, it's good just not as good as the best of the Les Pauls and those kinds of things. But I really don't think this is a Les Paul replacement. What I think I'm going to try to use it for is more like playing like acoustic clean stuff, like for songs where I have a rounder tone. And I was doing my new song, Drugstore Cowboy, it's a new old song that I've re, re, uh, uh, re, I just dug it up and added a part and got it going. That's the next song I'm recording. Um, that one is a candidate for this, especially live. You know, you can, play it play the beginning part you know in this kind of acoustic tone and then crank it for the big chorus um, so I finally got the bridge right I got it intonated and it's super easy to intonate with this thing and uh, I love the bridge works great you just go right in the back it's kind of like a, the Telecaster that's the six version not the original you know brass saddle three version where it's just three three screws but this is like the individual saddle version it's very similar to that design, except we have these big nylon saddles on here. The last thing that was just giving me so much grief and making it where I just couldn't get off on the guitar at sitting at home is every time I'd play it acoustically. It was making a rattling noise. And it would go away sometimes if I lowered the pickups. So I thought, well, maybe the pickups are causing the rattle up here because it was happening up here. So I tightened up uh, the screws on the tuning machines. I, I tightened up the tuning machines themselves to the body, you know, like wrenched them down, trying to be careful to not over tighten. I tightened the neck to the body of the guitar just to make sure that didn't have anything to do with it because it felt like everything I was doing was affecting it. But what was actually happening is having issues at the nut. And so it would depend on how I struck it or how the chord was, you know, handled, whether that made that buzz. And so once the buzz was going off, it was just ruining it for me. So what I did is I started, I started finding the most buzz on the G string. So, uh, you know, this, this, uh, and, and that's typical of Gibson type designs where you have a three and three headstock. Especially if they're, you know, you don't have string trees and all that, and you're you're getting it from an, a rake angle. See, like the the rake angle of the headstock. Um, that's typical to have a little bit of trouble at this at this point. 
that's always kind of the problem spot. So um, I thought, well, maybe that's what the, what it is. But I started on that string. So what I did is detuned, moved it out of the saddle slot, and I took these little saddle tools. I wish I brought them, but they're in my other little gig bag. And I got them from eBay. They're just these cheapies where they look like files and they have a rubber handle and one side will be like one and the other you flip it over and the other side will be the fourth string. So I went and got the uh, G strings uh, for the third slot and just real nice and easy. This is a nylon nut and they're different you know, from other nuts. Uh, you can tell that it's a lot tougher to, to kind of cut it. Uh, so I just went nice and slow. And I wasn't looking to lower the strings to do any kind of nut maintenance. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't any uh, anything in there, any kind of like debris that the, the string could be caught on and make that sitar sort of flangey tone that's just unacceptable to my ears. So uh, like a burr or something. So I just took it put it in there, went back and forth, kind of at an angle towards the, the string post, and uh, just went back and forth real light a couple times, and I saw like a little bit of nylon dust right here, and I just whoosh, did it one more time, just a little, I mean, I'm talking like back and forth just a few times, like real, and with no, I'm not, you know, just barely moving it back and forth, just to try to clear the channel, clear that space. Put the string back in, dialed it up, now it's gone, mostly. Start hearing it, now it's everywhere. I realize every single string has got this little condition. So I just detuned it E, clean that up, check it. Sounds great. Same thing, I, each string. I think I still have a little tiny bit on the high E, but I'm obviously not gonna do it right now and fix it. And I think it's okay. But before, if you did that, you heard a little shing, extra information. And then when you start playing chords, lots of extra information. Everything, everything starts sounding very, very extra. Lots of flangy uh, sitar sounding stuff. It's the kind of stuff that you're avoiding with a strap. It just makes you we're totally in tune. That's good. I've got this tuned to standard, and I've been messing with it so much that it's probably making it get weird. Going back and forth from different, uh, you know, climate, cold, warm, I mean, hot, not hot, but cool and warm back and forth. Okay, so, what else? so that was the ultimate problem, all the, the, the noise, and I found that almost every problem besides electronics issues. I always, always seem to come back to the nut. It's like almost like the most important thing if your nut's not correct. And so going through and just dressing it, just getting those channels, you know, those slots nice and clean where there's no burrs. That's all I did with each one. And I started thinking about it. Since it was a prototype, it has very little play wear. You can see a little bit of action like right around here. I mean, actually you can see a decent amount of action. But for it being so old, the frets still look you know, pretty good. So I don't think this guitar was played that much. It might have, you know, essentially been a prop for the show or just sat in a, uh, you know, a stand or a case or something and was just on standby for either one of those shows because it went to both Partridge Family and probably headed over to the Good Time Hour at some point because uh, Glenn Campbell played these. If you see footage of him, he switched, uh, switched these out for humbuckers. Probably got tired of messing around with him. Something might have gone wrong with the electronics, you know, out on the road and his tech just routed it out and slapped in some humbuckers because it, it uh, sounds like a Les Paul uh, when he's playing it. I forgot what song he was playing it on, uh, but I used to watch that show when I was young. That's how old I am, Glenn Campbell. All right, so, um, yeah, all right. Electronics got cleaned up just from spraying stuff in there. Still haven't opened it up and don't really want to if I don't need to because uh, I don't want to screw anything up, break something or something. And uh, I took the uh, the volume and tone, the tone knob off because I was going to take that off and spray down that way. And uh, it has this really nice Allen, you know, screw system to, to put it on the post. Everything on it is like just extra nice. And I think the prototype was extra nice. I don't know that they ever had the plate this cool. Later it had like an ovation engraved thing on it. Uh, this has ovation on it, which doesn't look as cool as the prototype. 
And uh, you can just tell the, the fact that they routed the body as opposed to putting it on the uh, pick guard was a nice extra custom touch. It kind of has like a Les Paul custom feel to it, um, at least for this guitar. And they went even further with that, with the Deacon. This would be more like a standard or a studio compared to the Deacon, because the Deacon's really uh, dressed up compared to this one. All right, so I'll show you what I'm talking about with this whole tone idea. Let me plug in here and uh, show you what I'm talking about, and we'll see if lowering these pickups and uh, what kind of tones we can get, but if, see if lowering those pickups is the right move. Because when I was sitting this close to the amp and turning it up, it was really feeding back in, in the nastiest way, like a, uh, an electronic way as opposed to a natural like feedback way. All right, here we go. So you have like this nice kind of clear like acoustic tone. I'll go to like, let's say three. I've got it on, let's see, I've got it on the neck, and I've got this one that way, which, let's put it, let's see what it just sounds like, the difference. So with it this way, it's fuller, with this, when it's engaged that way, it's like out of phase, like this way, it's out of phase. Now watch, we'll go back. Notice the tone pod didn't make any noise. Uh-oh. acoustic guitar to play my kind of ballad clean type stuff not that I have tons of that but uh, well, actually I do have tons of it in my history just not lately with dynamite uh, I went for like a one specific tone on the first record and now I'm expanding into like more sounds uh, you know mostly like more blues tone related Fender Strat to deluxe type tones and also to my a wonderful Marshall here. All right, so that was the neck pickup. Let me try the bridge pickup just to show you the difference. So here we go. Here's neck pickup at F3.
does terrible feedback, <clears throat> but it does this awesome like, oh, that was like really low. I don't know if you could feel that there. Not that Mike's gonna pick all that up. But um, man, this thing's awesome. It's finally like kicking ass. Took me a minute. some of the settings. Neck. Let's do that with and see what this out of phase thing. Just find the right one. See what you think and then we'll get out of here.
let's try, let's try the cleaner input. Let's see what happens. How clean it gets. cranked up too much and I'm so close to it um, but anyway I like this normal channel because you can get like even cleaner on it uh, probably just stepping away from the guitar you know from the amp let me just see if like standing up real quick will do it like getting away from it that's all it is just getting away from the amp So I just plugged it into the, into the deluxe and just messed around with it a little bit. And I think I like it in the second channel also, the like quieter channel. Listen to this. Now this is a more restrained sound and it would be better for like a, like if you're playing a small gig or like just wanting to go for more quiet, clean. This doesn't get as nasty. I've got it in the second channel. It's on 9. You could just take it to 10. And I've got the treble on 6, bass on 7. Uh, let's see what it sounds like. This is on like three on the guitar. <laughs>
and then crank it, you can do a similar thing with the 18 watt. Both of them sound good. I think I like it with the 18 watt better, but let's see what happens here. I'm going to go to 5. uses uh, lots that can be done with this guitar. I like the way I'm, my idea is to use it cleaner uh, as a you know acoustic guitar. Uh, I mean not really an acoustic guitar but for songs that I want that kind of cleaner thing like the Stroke Store Cowboy thing and then you can crank it you know when you want to. But uh, I think it's just an awesome guitar and uh, I, I don't think that many people play them. Uh, I don't know why. It's just not a very popular guitar, I guess, because Ovation was never known as a, um, you know, electric guitar company. And if nobody ever plays it, nobody famous uh, that goes out and really makes a mark with it, um, you know, just never happens as far as people lusting after it. But I can tell you, the neck is just absolutely amazing, and um, it's unique. It's like a cool thing to have. It stands out live too. I always like having guitars that stand out, and make people. Um, excited. I used to always love seeing Rick Nielsen with all his guitars. He always had like funky guitars and it still does I'm sure but um, it's just exciting you know especially live always picking up a different guitar and doing neat things with it. All right next time.